Josh Rubinum is the policy director for the U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights. Gentlemen, good to have you with us. And uh, Josh, I'd like to start with you. Nice to have you with us. Uh, Josh, okay, so we understand that the Palestinians are upset, but this is not a march or a peaceful protest. We have 40,000 Palestinians violently rioting, throwing rocks, Molotov cocktails, pipe bombs, launching firebomb kites towards Israel. Hamas has provided them with maps on, on how to get to the nearest civilian communities across the border. So what are their intentions should they get through the border? If Israel didn't stop them and would let them through, what is their goal? Well, I think that Palestinians in the besieged Gaza Strip have been very clear about what the intentions of this protest are, and that is to exercise Palestinians' long-denied basic elemental human right to return to the homes and the lands from which they were exiled by Israel upon its creation Josh, in 1948. You're not Israel answering my question. More than what, what is, uh, we, Josh, am, you're not answering I my am, question. What is the idea I am answering your question. with getting beyond more than, the border? More than what do they hope to accomplish? Of, to exercise their right of return to the homes and the lands from which they were expelled by Israel in 1948. More than 70% of the population of Palestinians in Gaza are refugees, people who were displaced forcibly by Israel from their homes in 1948. And despite the fact that Israel agreed to implement the Palestinian refugees' right of return when it became a member of the UN in 1949. Here we are, 70 years later, Palestinians are still denied by Israel their most basic, elemental, fundamental human right of return to their homes and their properties. So exercise That's what this protest so is about. Exercise their so called right of return, does that mean to it's take not away a so the properties right. It's a right. uh, from, from the Israelis living there? Uh, Dan, let's bring you it's in. This is not a picket right. march. It's a right uh, this that's is not Israel. In Let, let's give Dan law a chance here. In, Dan, in UN uh, resolutions. Dan uh, this is not a picket march. This is not Israel suppressing free speech. These are not peaceful protests. Uh, so, what is Israel supposed to be doing in, in this situation? What do you think the correct Israeli response should be? I think that Israel is doing what any normal country would do to defend its border from infiltrations of people that are not innocent bystanders that are coming in. Some of them are terrorists. Some are encouraged by Hamas to infiltrate, to create havoc within uh, Israel. So I think that Israel is responding and defending its borders, defending its citizens. That's first and foremost. I think Israel is uh, in a position here, uh, in a it's a very problematic situation. Hamas is uh, uh, oppressing its own citizens, is using cynically its citizens, sending them to the borders, paying them money to go to the Israel-Gaza border, leaving Israel very few choices here. So Israel can perhaps at times act with more restraint, but there's not a whole lot that it can do. It has acted with restraint in different different cases, but when people actually climb your fence and cross, try to cross the border, then it's left with very few options. Uh, Josh, Hamas is encouraging uh, these Palestinians to cross the fence and to infiltrate the civilian communities. Uh, Hamas is urging people to rush the fence, telling them that it had been breached incorrectly. They're sending women and they're sending children into what is undoubtedly a violent situation. Does Hamas deserve some of the blame, at least in your opinion, for, for inciting this violence? Well, let's be very clear. Hamas had nothing to do with organizing these protests. This is a coalition of popular Palestinian civil society Hamas organizations has, Hamas has on the ground. Hamas has been the organizers of these protests. That's factually inaccurate. You know, I think it's I think it's interesting that you don't interrupt your other guest at all, but you consistently interrupt me before I can fact, even get a full I'm sentence I'm just out. making fact checks here. Go on. So let's be very clear. There is no border between Israel and the Gaza Strip. As you know, there's an armistice line. Borders are between sovereign countries. Gaza is not a sovereign country. It is an occupied and illegally besieged and blockaded territory that's a small part of historic Palestine. Now, Palestinians occupied under international who, law who occupies Gaza? don't have... There is no occupier Israel in Gaza. Doesn't Israel is the occupying power of the Gaza Strip, as even the U.S. State Department recognizes, and the entire international community, because Israel has effective control over the borders and airspace and sea of the Gaza, Gaza. Strip. 
And it's, but it's withdrawn from within the Gaza Strip, but its blockade from without the Gaza Strip clearly shows that it maintains effective control over the territory and under international law, it is the Josh, occupying power. Josh, you're not answering now, the Israel question. Does occupied... Hamas have some role? Do you think that Hamas has some role at least in, in these deaths of, of women and children by encouraging them to, to go in there, telling them that the situation is different than what it is? Do you think Hamas does have some responsibility here? That was the original question. I think the onus and the responsibility lies directly on Israeli military forces, which in contravention of international law have issued shoot to kill live fire orders against unarmed protesters. The responsibility for these deaths belong to the Israeli military forces, which even according to your own reports, have shot down people, a majority of whom are unarmed protesters. Dan, what's your response to this? Uh, the White House is saying uh, that Hamas has been inciting uh, violence for years, well before the U.S. embassy move. Uh, Hamas is calling for uh, the return of all of, quote, Palestine. What is uh, Hamas's responsibility in this? Hamas bears 100% uh, responsibility of the situation right now on the ground. Uh, for weeks, it has been uh, building up towards uh, May 14th and May 15th to have these dates designated as days of riots, of attempts to infiltrate and cross the border. Hamas is holding its own citizens hostage uh, and is forcing them, and some paying and some forcing them, to rush to the fence. Clearly, uh, Hamas is out of control, is acting in a very uh, um, uh, uh, vicious way. Uh, against its own citizens, uh, very unfortunate, as the situation of the G citizens of Gaza is tragic, and they do need uh, assistance, and they do need uh, to alleviate their, their conditions. However, Hamas is not enabling its own citizens to do so. Hamas has a $260 million military budget per year. Very few of its dollars go for the benefit, for infrastructure, for the benefits of the citizens of Gaza. So Hamas bears full responsibility for this situation. And unfortunately, as long as Hamas controls Gaza, I don't see anything changing. All right, uh, Dan Arbel, Josh Rubina, we appreciate uh, your insight. Thank you both for joining us.